This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub, and specifically, it covers the content for Exercise 1, setting up for workflow on Cloud Platform. Exercise 1 is all about setting things up from a Cloud Platform perspective and from an IDE perspective as well. There's a small number of steps, and let's just run through those steps really quickly now before we actually start. First of all, we're going to log on to the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit and have a look around. We're then going to set up some service instances and other artifacts using a booster on SAP Cloud Platform. We're then going to have a quick look at what the booster did so we understand what's going on in the background. And then finally, in this exercise, we're going to set up our interactive development environment, our IDE, in the form of the SAP Business Application Studio. So let's get going. According to the prerequisites, I've already registered for my account on SAP Cloud Platform Trial. And I'm going to enter my account now. And this is what you should see as well if you've just set up an account for the first time. I've got my global account identifier here. It also has a subdomain, which is the same ID with dash GA at the end. And by default, uh, I have a single sub account and by default it's called trial as well. In setting up uh, the trial account, I chose Europe as a region and therefore my region for this trial sub account is in Europe, Frankfurt on AWS. It's a multi environment sub account. And <coughs> if we click through into that trial account, we can see that uh, an environment within that sub account has already been set up for us. And that it specifically is a Cloud Foundry environment. There's a one to one relationship between a sub account an SAP Cloud Platform sub account. And in this case, a Cloud Foundry environment. Within the Cloud Foundry environment, you can have one or more spaces. And by default, when things are set up for you automatically, on registering for a new trial, you get your sub account, you get the Cloud Foundry environment, you get the organization and you get a single space called dev. That space is currently empty, as we can see here. Now, the things that we need for this content for workflow on SAP Cloud Platform, we need service instances, we need authorizations in the form of roles assigned to us relating to workflow and so on. So we've already logged on to the SAP Cloud Platform and looked around. One thing that's uh, important to know that we, is that we're going to be coming back to this particular place in the cockpit quite often. So it's worth, and this is as we're directed as well, it's worth bookmarking this particular page so I'm going to bookmark that by dragging it into this workflow folder. I'm also going to rename it and call it what it says in the documentation there, trial sub account home. So we know where we are. By the way, currently I've got the cockpit left hand menu collapsed. So I'm going to expand that so you can see what's going on. OK, now we've expanded the menu. We can see that the next thing we uh, should really do in this look around is to select the spaces menu item. And we should be able to see the dev space, which is there as well. We should be able to see all the spaces. There's only one. And we have this dev space set up with more than enough quota uh, for what we need for this particular series of exercises. We can also see here uh, at the trial sub account level, we can see all sorts of different uh, aspects, uh, destinations, roles and role collections, and so on. Now, talking of destinations and roles and role collections and also service instances, workflow service being uh, the most important one for this particular set of exercises, we could go through and set up everything that we need manually. But instead, we're going to use the concept of an SAP Cloud Platform booster. The boosters are available at the account level. So we're going to use the breadcrumbs to go back to my global account where I can see the, the trial sub account. And in the left hand menu here in the navigation, I can select boosters. And that's what we've just uh, dis uh, seen described here. Now, um, as it says here, the booster enables automatic setup of lots of different artifacts relating to a particular topic. Now, 
just down here, we have a booster titled Setup Account for Workflow Management. This is going to set some service quotas for the account or make sure that those service quotas are appropriate. It's going to create some service instances and we'll see what services uh, are relevant here. It's going to define a couple of destinations. We'll look at those as well. And it's also going to create a new role collection relating to workflow and assign it to my trial user as well. So as instructed here with this little hand, I'm going to click start. Now this may take a few moments, but once it's finished, we'll have everything set up for us. Okay, the booster has completed successfully. So we can close this dialogue and now proceed with step three, where we can check actually what the booster did for us. So first of all, we're gonna check the service instances. We can use the bookmark that we've just created to go to our trial sub account home. And we can see now that whereas before we had zero applications and zero service instances, we've now got five service instances. We can either go via the spaces navigation item, or we can go directly to this list of service instances for that dev space by selecting the, the number there. And we can see that uh, five service instances have been created for us automatically in this brand new account. There was nothing there before by the booster. You may think five is quite a lot. The, the cloud platform workflow uh, that we're going to be following through the series of exercises really only needs the workflow uh, service and the portal service. Uh, we don't need, for example, the business rule service or the process visibility service, but the booster sets up everything you need to for a, for a complete workflow management scenario. So that's great. We'll leave uh, the things we don't need, we'll leave as they are. There's also, as we saw in the uh, progress indicator, some destinations been set up. Now, we don't need those destinations, but just let's have a quick look at what they are to satisfy our curiosity. So we can again go back to our sub account home and look within the connectivity navigation item at the destinations. And we can see there's been two destinations set up for us, both relating to business rules. Business rules pointing to the business rules runtime API endpoint, and also another destination pointing to the API SAP API business hub, which is great. We don't need those, but there's no point in deleting them. We can just leave them as they are. Finally, we can have a look at the security entry here and look at the role collections. Now, a new role collection has been set up by this booster and we can see it at the top. It's called BPM services. It's got 12 roles. We can see those roles there and we can clearly guess that uh, PV stands for process visibility. Uh, and we've got the, the business rules runtime and repository API endpoints, or rather uh, the runtime and repository uh, authorizations. And then the rest of them are for, for workflow, which is what we're going to be needing. You can also see that the role collection has been assigned already to one user. And that's me, that's the user ID relating to this trial account. So that's great. So at this stage, as it says here, we're all set with the main workflow service. We've got an instance of the main workflow service, and we've also got access to use it. So now we want to set up the SAP Web IDE. So now we want to set up our IDE, our interactive development environment, and we're going to be using the SAP Business Application Studio, and I'm going to be calling it the App Studio from now on. So the App Studio, uh, we can access from the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit by means of a subscription. So we can go at this level to the subscriptions and we can see a number of possible subscriptions, one of which is the SAP Business Application Studio. So I'm going to select that tile and subscribe to it. The subscription processing shouldn't take too long. And once it's finished, we can then go straight to the application. OK, so the subscription process has happened. Before we can start using the application, we also need to make sure we have the appropriate authorization to do so. 
So as instructed here, we can go back to our sub account overview page, which we can get to through our bookmark here. And within the security navigation section, we can have a look at the trust configuration. And we, within that trust configuration, we can assign certain role collections relating to the business application studio to our user. So within the trust configuration, I'm going to select the, the default trust configuration here, enter my ID, and have a look at the current assignments. And we can see that I have an assignment that was granted to me at the very uh, in initiation of the sub account itself. I'm the administrator. And we can see the role collection that has been created by the booster and also assigned to me by the booster. And that's the BPM services role collection that we just looked at. So now I'm going to assign myself another two role collections relating to the business application uh, studio. I'm going to assign the administrator role collection. And I'm also going to assign myself the developer role collection. This means now that I should be able to start up and access uh, the App Studio subscription. So I'm going to go back to the subscription page, which is here, and use the GoTo application link. And as we can see here, this is this is almost like the landing page for the App Studio. And the App Studio allows you to create one or more dev spaces. And a dev space uh, allows you to organize tools, extensions, and so on, clustered for a certain topic or for a certain type of development. So we're going to create a dev space for our workflow here. So we're going to call the dev space workflow, as it shows us to do here. And every dev space has basic development uh, extensions, basic tools, and also a basic SAP version of the Thea IDE. But for our purposes, we also want some additional SAP extensions, the Launchpad module, so that we can look in a graphical form at the common data model that describes what goes on to a Fiori Launchpad site. We're also gonna use and need to use the uh, multi-target application tools, the MTA tools. And of course, we want to be able to define or create workflow definitions. Uh, for that, we can use the workflow management extension. So I'm going to hit the create dev space button. And within a few moments, our dev space will be available for us to use. So our dev space is now up and running. So we can dive straight in. I'm going to use the link here, workflow. And when it first starts up, we're shown a welcome page, which should appear shortly. And it should remind us a little bit, if we're familiar already with uh, tools such as Microsoft's Visual Studio Code, you know, we, we should feel fairly at home. So at this stage, there's not really much we need to do, except to have a little bit of an explore. One particular thing I think it's worth doing now is to connect our dev space to the Cloud Foundry organization and uh, space. We can see here the message at the bottom, the organization and space in Cloud Foundry have not been set. So that's what's described here in this part of step four. So we can just click on this and follow the instructions. Effectively, all we're doing is we're authenticating with the Cloud Foundry endpoint, which is one of the environments in our sub account, in our trial sub account. So let's do that now. As you can see here, the App Studio has a really nice, simple uh, wizard to enable us to select and complete and uh, specify values for uh, certain things. So the Cloud Foundry endpoint that we want, of course, is the endpoint relating to the organization uh, that we saw earlier. So let's just flip back before we confirm this so you can see where this is coming from. If we go back to our uh, trial sub account home, this is the API endpoint that's required here. So yeah, we can confirm that's the right endpoint. And now all we need to do is authenticate with that endpoint.
this effectively is exactly the same procedure that you would go through if you were authenticating using the CF command line tool as well. So now I have a number of organizations. I'm going to select the appropriate organization. Again, let's have a quick look back over here at the uh, trial sub account home and we can see the organization name 5539D095 trial, which is this one here. And we only have one space within that organization. So we'll select it. So at this stage, we're authenticated with the Cloud Foundry endpoint. We've selected an organization and within that organization, we've selected the space, which is the dev space. And now we can see that the organization and space have been set. That's pretty much it. Before we leave, let's create a bookmark for this dev space and let's call it App Studio Workflow Dev Space. So I'm going to put that bookmark in there and I'm going to rename it And that's it for exercise one. Thanks for watching.